Today we're going to talk about what light metering mode you should use on your camera for your landscape photography. So on a recent landscape photography workshop, I was asked what light metering mode should they be using on their camera? And I thought that was an important question and one I really haven't covered before. So we're going to take a quick look at how the light meter in the camera works, which light mode I recommend, and a tool that I think is better than the light meter in the camera to help you get the proper exposure for your landscape photography. So modern day cameras have a light meter inside the camera. You've probably seen it. It's a little bar on your camera, usually either down towards the bottom or sometimes over the side, depending on how you have your display configured. And that is sort of telling you what the camera thinks a properly exposed image is. Now how the light meter works is you've got your scene composed and you're taking a picture, all the light comes into the sensor. And the light meter converts all of that scene into gray tones. So it's ranging from a light tone to a dark tone. And it's trying to balance out that scene, depending on what mode you have set, to an 18% gray. So it's trying to bring anything that's too dark, bring it up a little bit. Anything that's too bright, it's trying to bring it down a little bit to come up with an average of an 18% gray. Now why 18% gray? Well, because perceptually, 18% gray is what's the midpoint between bright scenes and dark scenes when you're looking at them. So that 18% gray reflects 18% of the light is right there in that midpoint. So essentially, the camera's light meter is trying to get to a point where the whole scene sort of falls, averages out to that midpoint. And of course that light meter, it's a little bar and it ranges from pluses to minuses. So right in the middle at zero means the camera thinks you have a properly exposed image. As you bump up towards the plus one, plus two, plus three, it's starting to think you have an overexposed image. And likewise, as you start to back down to a minus one, minus two, minus three on that bar, it thinks you have an underexposed image. So if you're using manual mode and you're looking at your light meter and that is the light meter is on the negative side, so like negative two, it means you're going to either need to open your aperture a little wider to let more light in or slow your shutter speed to bring it closer to that midpoint, the zero that the light meter thinks is correct. And vice versa, if you are photographing a scene and you're on the plus one side of that exposure meter above zero, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is maybe speed your shutter up just a little bit to bring that light meter back down towards zero, or maybe close that aperture down a little bit, take it from like F11 to F14 and see what that does, see if that gets you the proper exposure. So that's really it, that's how the light meter works. Camera looks at the scene, light comes in, the light meter converts things to gray tones, so it's ranging from a light colored to dark colored and trying to come up with the average for that scene. So it sits what is perceptually the middle, which happens to be equivalent to like an 18% gray on a gray card, which means it's reflecting back about 18% of the light, puts you right there in the mid point. So there are a couple ways we can influence how the light meter is measuring light. Most cameras have at least three light metering modes. Some will have an additional, but they really sort of boil down to sort of three main modes. There's a mode where it's evaluating the whole scene. So everything that you have composed in is what it's trying to balance to that middle gray. There is a center weighted where whatever's in the center of the frame is what it's trying to do. And it's gonna ignore the edges a little bit more, not care quite as much about those. And in their single point light metering mode, which is where typically where your focus point is at, that's what it's gonna to try to meter to middle gray meaning that it's going to sort of ignore a lot of the other of the scene, meaning it could fall into either underexposed or overexposed. So let's take a look at those just a little closer. The first one is often called on Nikon cameras matrix mode, uh, Canons call it evaluative mode, I believe, and other camera brands tend to rotate between multi-mode, multi-segment, multiple, but they all mean the same thing. It is the light meters looking at the whole scene, balancing it all out, and trying to get an average gray across that whole scene. If we move on to center weighted, this is maybe you're taking a picture of your dog and it's it, he's out there, it's another frame and you've got your camera lined up. And what's gonna happen here is the camera's gonna give priority to that center of the scene. So if the dog is nice and bright, maybe it's a, you know, a white haired dog and it's going to keep that exposure reduced which is probably gonna cause those edges in the corners to fall into being underexposed. But it's trying to highlight that your subject in the center of the frame is what needs properly exposed. So it, it gives more priority to that center frame as opposed to the edges. So like I said, that can lean to, depending what you're photographing in the center of that frame, it can lead to it being often a little bit of shadow, a little underexposed or a little too bright, a little overexposed. But your subject that's towards the center of the frame is correct. And finally, the third most common mode is single point mode. And this is where you put your point, your single point of focus on an object 
and the camera is going to try to get the best exposure for that particular point. Again, it's still going to try to take it to 18% gray, that middle gray, but it's going to do that at all costs to the other parts of the scene. And this can be handy in some forms of portrait photography where maybe the person's face is lit brightly, they're on stage under a spotlight, you can put the, the single point on their face and it's going to properly expose their face and let the rest of the stage sort of fall in the darkness as opposed to having it all brought up and then overexposing the face. So all three modes have their place in photography. So for landscape photography, I recommend using matrix mode, evaluative mode, multi, multi-segment, whatever your camera brand calls it. But at the end of the day, the one that looks at the whole scene and brings it into account. Because I want to get an image back home and in the computer that's well exposed across the whole image. I might make some tweaks and adjustments in Lightroom or Photoshop to sort of pull the highlights down a little bit, pull some light out of the shadows, some detail out of the shadows but I want to go home with a file that's pretty equally balanced and exposed. So when someone asks me on a landscape photography workshop, what should they have their light metering mode set to? It's going to be one of those, the matrix, multi, or evaluative, depending on your camera brand. Because those other modes are more apt to either over or underexpose those edges of the image if you're doing something like center weighted or single point, and that's not what I want. So now I've talked about light metering mode, how the camera light meter works, which mode I recommend for landscape photographers. Now it's time to point out some of the cons to the light meter and why you can't 100% rely on it. As we talked about, the camera's light meter is trying to balance the scene out to 18% gray, that middle gray, something average, something in the middle. So let's say, for example, you're photographing a snowy scene and there's a lot of white, not much of anything else lots and lots of white in the picture. Well, think about it. The camera's seeing white. You know with your eye that white is supposed to be bright and on the brighter side of things. But the camera sensor, the camera light meter, is going to try to correct that and bring it down to a middle gray. So it's going to actually underexpose the snow so you sort of get some grayish looking snow. Maybe you're photographing some caves or you're in the shadows of a deep forest and you're taking photos. And in that case, you have a lot of dark parts of the scene and that's part of what's making the scene up. But the light meter is going to look at it and go, well, those are all too dark. I need to get to the average of this and sort of bring those up. So it starts to pull those shadows up, perhaps unnecessarily so. And then on top of that, as it's trying to pull those up, there's a good chance it's going to blow out your highlights and you're going to lose the detail in the highlights. So the camera light meter is not perfect. It's simply trying to get your image from an exposure standpoint to the average, that middle gray. And because of that, certain scenes are going to be difficult to judge based on light meter alone. Now, as you start to learn this and see this, you can know that for snowy scenes, you're probably going to want to overexpose and let the light meter go on the plus side of things. If you're on a dark scene where things are dark, you're going to know you, it's okay to let the light meter go to the negative side of things where it's a little underexposed because you want it to be because you want those shadows to look like shadows and not pulled up too brightly. So as long as you know this, you can still sort of make the light meter work to get what you want. You just have to understand how the light meter works, what it's trying to do, and then use your own eyes to look at the scene and figure out what you think the light meter should look like in order to do this. Now, I think there's a better tool to use if you're trying to get proper exposure for your landscape photography images. Let's talk about that. So the tool I think that is a better tool for getting a proper exposure for your landscape photography is the histogram. And that is a tool that it shows a graph, essentially a graph of values from light to dark and maps them out on that graph. So if you have a lot of things in the shadowy side, you'll have a little hump on the shadow side. If you have a lot of things on the bright side, you'll have a hump on the bright side. If things are all pretty much in the middle for that scene, you'll sort of just get sort of a hump like that. This tool, I think, is much better to use for a proper landscape photography setting. It still takes a little bit of thought because you need to think in your head, what scene am I looking at right now and how should that look? I always recommend looking at a scene and thinking about predicting what a good histogram should look like in your image. But most modern cameras these days with a live view can enable the histogram to be shown in live view mode. And if you do that, while you're composing your image, you'll have that graph right on the screen. And as you make shutter speed and aperture changes, that graph will change in real time. And you can see, am I too far to the right? Am I getting too many brights? Am I losing detail on the bright? And you can make an aperture change, maybe kick it from f11 to f14 or speed your shutter up a little bit to sort of slide that graph back into where you're getting the detail. You can look at it and see, am I losing the darks? I do I have too much falling off the left side of the screen where I can't bring them up later? So it sort of takes a look at the scene regardless of light metering mode 
and let you see as you change things what things should look like. So for example, on my snow example with the light meter, the light meter is gonna look at that, the camera light meter, and look at that and try to take it to a middle gray. So it's gonna pushing you to underexpose that snow. If I look at the snow and I'm using the histogram, I'm gonna know the snow is bright. Now I don't wanna lose the detail, but I'm gonna know that I want that histogram towards the right hand side of the screen, not hitting the line because I'm gonna to start to lose some detail, but I want it over there towards the right because I am photographing a bright scene and my histogram is going to be on the bright side. Similar with a shadow situation where you've got some dark shadows in the image. I'm going to look at the scene and know, okay, I have some dark shadows in this image. My histogram is probably going to have some stuff off to the, the left where the dark side of the, the graph. So when I'm making my adjustments, I don't want to lose a ton of shadow detail. So I'm going to keep an eye on that, but I can sort of see where things fall. And does the scene match what I'm seeing on the histogram? So it still takes a little bit of thought as a photographer to understand what you're looking at and how these camera tools are measuring it. But in my experience, my base exposures became much more consistent when I started using the histogram. I became more confident of getting what I wanted in the camera so that I came home with a well-exposed image. To me, as far as the mechanics of being out in the field, getting that well-exposed image is one of the most important things because then you can use your post-processing tools to change how things look and sort of bring things into, into that. But with the camera, you wanna capture as much data as possible. And I think the histogram does a much better job of that than using just the light meter on the camera. Now, this is just a high level overview of the histogram. I've done a more in-depth video on the histogram, which I will link to down in the description. I highly recommend if you haven't used the histogram before, or if this idea of using the histogram is new to you, take a look at that video. It sort of dives into it a little bit more with some demonstrations of what happens to that histogram and how to use it to get a proper exposure. So I highly recommend you check that video out if the histogram is new to you, or maybe if you just want a refresher. So that's it. That's your camera's light meter. That's how it works. That's the mode I recommend if you're gonna use the camera light meter and a tool that I think is a little better for your landscape photography to get a well-exposed image, the histogram. So I hope you found today's video useful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching. <music>